brother, Harry Potter, the Chosen One, the boy who lived twice, Master of Death, Triwizard Tournament Champion, Gryffindor, Parcel Mouth, Creator of Dumbledore's Army, Horcrux, and Obscurial? One of the most common questions that we have gotten since Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them came out is why wasn't Harry an Obscurial? An Obscurial is what you call a wizard who has an Obscurus growing inside of them. An Obscurus is kind of like a magical tumor that starts to exist when a wizard represses their magic. Eventually the Obscurus will turn on its host, exploding out of them, often killing the witch or wizard. The example we see in Fantastic Beasts is Credence, who, like Harry, is adopted and, like Harry, has a magic-hating mother in the form of Mary Lou Barebone. Mary Lou is the leader of an anti-magic movement known as the Second Salemers. She is constantly having her army of adopted children pass out anti-magic flyers. And she is introduced to us when she is giving an impassioned speech on the steps to the bank that Newt is heading into. Throughout the movie, we see Credence going to Percival Graves to have his hands healed. It is later revealed that these wounds are actually coming from Mary Mary Lou, who is disciplining Credence every time she catches him doing anything unusual or magic related. This drives Credence to try to repress his magical powers, which causes an Obscurus to grow inside of him, which eventually explodes out of him in a dark cloud of destructive rage. When this happens, the Obscurus will typically kill its host, but Credence was uniquely able to actually control his Obscurus. So that leads us to Harry, who had a very similar story to Credence, and yet he didn't turn into a giant black smoke monster and blow a hole in Privet Drive. Harry, much like Credence, was without his birth parents and was raised by people who pretty openly hated magic. Or at least they were open about it after Harry knew about it. The Dursleys weren't exactly out on the street corner rallying people to their cause. But that doesn't mean they didn't punish Harry for doing magic or even just for being magical at all. For one, despite having a second bedroom in the house, they force Harry to live in the cupboard under the stairs without explaining to him why. They lock him in there for weeks at a time for various bad behaviors such as his hair growing too quickly or being found on the roof of his school. They leave him with neighbors when they go on trips, even though they are bringing another child for Dudley to play with. They don't feed him as well, they don't care when Dudley beats up on him, and they don't really give him gifts. I think once they gave him a toothpick, but to be fair, Toothpicks can be pretty useful. Even when they finally do give him a bedroom, they put bars on the window and lock him in there as well. So yeah, Harry endures quite a bit of punishment from the Dursleys just for being magical, and there are a couple of instances when the magic lashes out at them. Something that is actually known for Obscurus's... Obscuri to do. First, when Harry makes the glass disappear at the zoo and Dudley falls into the boa constrictor tank, and again when he inflates Aunt Marge. The second occasion really stands out because at that time Harry is actually trying to repress his power so that Uncle Vernon will sign his permission slip to Hogsmeade. And yet, despite his many ordeals with the Dursleys, Harry never develops an Obscurus. But why not? He kind of seems like the perfect candidate. You might think, well, they just needed a new evil thing for the movie and didn't quite figure out how other characters might fit that same description, but that's not actually true. For one, the phrase Obscurus first appears in this book, which was published back in 2001, and is the original copy of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Although to be fair, it is actually not a beast in this book, it is actually the publisher, Obscurus Books. And second, there is another character, Ariana Dumbledore, who was almost certainly written to be an Obscurus in the main series, we have a full video on that, just click the card. The real reason is actually pretty simple, and it all comes down to ignorance. Mary Lou Barebone is openly against magic and specifically punishes Credence for doing it. And Credence knows why he's being punished and is specifically repressing his magic to avoid punishment. The Dursleys, on the other hand, while they still definitely hate magic, take more of the ignorance is bliss kind of approach, thinking that maybe if they just ignore it, it will go away. That was kind of my approach for homework. 
it doesn't work. So even though the Dursleys know what's happening, they are afraid to tell Harry what he's doing or anything about his parents in fear that he might try to develop his powers. And that is the main difference. Harry doesn't even know there is something to repress. He doesn't know he's doing magic. Had the Dursleys actually told Harry what he was and then tried to force him to not do magic, most likely Harry would have developed an Obscurus. Thankfully, they just punished him over and over for basically no reason. I mean, geez, can you imagine if Harry was not only Voldemort's Horcrux, but was also an Obscurial at the same time? That's a bad day. For my question of the day, do you agree? Is that the reason why Harry is not an Obscurial? Or did you have your own interpretation? Be sure to leave your thoughts in the towel section down below. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like to see some more Harry Potter action from us, you can click right here to find out how Harry may have ruined the Dursleys' lives, or right here to find out whether or not Ariana Dumbledore is an Obscurial. But Jay, that is everything that I've got for you today, man. I will see you on Tuesday.